We spent a little bit of time yesterday talking about Morgan Barron. He plays for the Winnipeg Jets, and he took at least 75 stitches and then came back the next period. And I was wondering, are you born tough or do you become tough when you become a hockey player? And then I said to Fritzy, why don't you see if we could get Mark Messier on? Uh, let's do over under stitches that Mark has had in his career. Todd, I'll start with you. Has has Messier had at least 75 total stitches? Yes. I was going to guess something in the neighborhood of 93. 93. Seton? At one time or total? Total. I'm going to go 175. 175. Yeah. Marvin? I'm going to go 123. Paulie? I'm going under 20. Mark gave out stitches. Exactly. He gave out oh, stitches. Exactly. Exactly. I'll say Messier less than 25 stitches. He joins us now. All right, Mess. How many stitches in your 20-year career? I would have zero idea how many, but I know it was more than uh, I know it was more than 20. Okay. I know it was less than a thousand, but somewhere <laughs> in between. <laughs> What's the worst uh, injury you got where you had to get stitches? Uh. You know, that's a great question. I was pretty lucky uh, in a lot of uh, aspects uh, from injury standpoint. Uh, I never had a, a cut where I had 75 stitches like Baron did the other night. That was uh, pretty pretty uh, gutty for him to come back the way he did. But uh, I, I was more happy that uh, it was awfully close to his eye. That, would, that could have yeah. been a catastrophic uh, injury, but uh, he, 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 got, he definitely got lucky. But do they just stitch you up on the table? They just take you in the back and just start... Stitching. Oh yeah, they get the old the old needles, a little binder twine that they put the hay bales together, and they sew you back together, <laughs> and they throw you back out there right away. But are you uh, not numbing? Numbing and freezing is optional. <laughs> <laughs> are you born tough as a hockey player, or do you become tough as a hockey? Well, player? I think the sport the sport uh, uh, makes you tough. Uh, it's uh, it's it's a lot of pain to play hockey. It's certainly a lot of pain to play winning hockey. Uh, blocking shots and sacrificing your body and all the inherent risks that go out there. Everybody thinks, uh, and, and it is, uh, hockey is an amazing artistic ballet on ice. Uh, I, I, I often refer to it as more of a knife fight. So you got a 60 minute knife fight with, uh, you know, 24 switchblades of people skates traveling at 30 miles an hour. So the inherent dangers on the ice are, are there every day. And it's just a reminder when, when something happens, about, uh, it's just how dangerous the sport it is. And, and how, you know how how incredibly tough and you know uh, you know how much resilience the, the players have uh, to play in that kind of tournament for two months under that kind of pressure. But is your toughness different than Wayne Gretzky's toughness? Well, that's 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 a great question. You know, Brian Leach was maybe one of the toughest players I ever played with, and he never had a fight in the National Hockey League. Uh, uh, but you know, as a, as a smaller defenseman, uh, he never once uh, backed away from going into his own zone when he had the likes of Laren, Eric Lindros, you know, coming bearing down on him uh, at full speed. So there's many different ways to to talk about toughness in hockey. It's, it's just not fighting. It's it's the willingness to go stand in, in the hard areas in front of the net and take a pounding to score a goal. It's uh, you know taking a check to get the puck out of your own zone in the dying seconds. Uh, you know, so toughness comes in many different forms in hockey. Is is Wayne the best player of all time? Uh, well, I, I don't. I think he might be the best athlete of all time. If you ask me, I'm a little biased because I got to see pure genius for all the years I played with him and against him. Uh, his numbers stack up that nobody can compare us from a statistical standpoint. So, if you want to talk about the best athlete uh, over the last century, uh, my, my, my guess would probably be Wayne Gretzky. But I wonder, and, and the reason why I say this, we look at Michael Jordan and LeBron can't surpass Michael Jordan in a lot of people's minds. It, what would it take for somebody to surpass Gretzky as the greatest player of all time? Well, it's all subjective, as you know, because we really are comparing, you know, uh, athletes from different eras and the game has changed technology, science, training. I mean, everything's changed. Athletes are getting bigger, stronger, but what you can do is you can compare uh, different athletes of what they did to their contemporaries when they played the game. And, and if you just do that statistically alone, uh, Wayne's numbers just outshine everybody's uh, from what he did uh, to the competition. So 
I'm not sure how you can really judge it other than people have their opinions and, and certainly they have their favorites. I mean, Michael Jordan was an easy guy to, to like and the Bulls run was magical. Uh, even if you weren't a Bulls fan, you couldn't take your eyes off it. Uh, you were compelling t- uh, TV. So, um, but like I said, <laughs> I'm a little biased with, with Wayne and because I got to see it up close and personal. How do you think this season with Connor McDavid is going to be viewed historically? Well, I think, you know, he's emerging as one of the best players to ever play the game. Um, you know, I think for what he did this year in a, in a new cap era uh, with the new rules, uh, the, the, the goaltending becoming much better, the defense is much stronger. Um, you know, I think there's so many different ways that you can look at what he did this year and how powerful of a season individually it was. Um and ultimately, you know, we're always judged on whether you can actually win a championship as a player. And uh, statistically, and what he's doing as an individual uh, is, uh, is is incredibly impressive. Uh, you know, he's probably, if you look at all the other sports right now, is there anybody that's dominating his sport as much as he is uh, from an individual standpoint? But as you know, in a team sport, it's all about the championships and your legacy. Yeah, sometimes you look at the greatness of a player by who's next in line to that great player, and it feels like there's a big separation there. With Well, there is a big delta there this year, and maybe more so than any other sport does. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, similarly with the Boston Bruins. I mean, it's great to have an unbelievable regular season, but Golden State Warriors won 73 games one year. They didn't win the championship. Well, it's hard to believe that uh, the Boston Bruins, under the amount of parity that's in the league right now, uh, with the salary cap, trying to keep a team together for any number of years is so difficult that they actually set a record in the, in the history of our game with 65 wins this year. It's incredible. And I don't, I don't really know if people understand how much of an amazing feat that was for Boston this year, especially early on when nobody gave them the, 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 the respect that they ultimately deserved because of the injuries that they had and nobody penciled them in to – I think everybody was thinking if they could just hold on to 500 and then get healthy and make the playoffs. Yeah. I, I didn't see it coming. I don't think anybody saw it coming. This magical run, it was just it, mo- one of the most impressive things I've seen in our game in, in many, many years. Mess, if I gave you the Bruins or the field? That's a great, uh, that's, that, wow, that, that would be a great prop bet. Uh, I uh, see now I even know the language for the New <laughs> <laughs> York for the gambling. <laughs> Um, I don't know. Um, I would probably have to take the field on that. Uh, yeah. There's just so many things that can, could, can go wrong. Uh, injuries, so many th- different things play a factor. And, um, and every team has their weaknesses. I mean, you, you don't see too many weaknesses with Boston because of the year they had, and you're trying to figure out where those weaknesses are. But as we saw last night, Florida played hard. And uh, sure enough, they deserve to win that game because of it, and they did. And uh, that's not an easy place to win in Boston. He's Mark Messier, the Hall of Famer. When uh, the Rangers won the Stanley Cup, I went to the party afterwards, and people were drinking out of the cup. Uh, and I, I uh, grabbed a sip out of the cup. I actually asked... Dan, can I just correct you? People were drinking a lot out of the Stanley <laughs> Cup. <laughs> I asked you what was in the cup, and you had some colorful language as if to say, if, if you don't want to drink it, then pass it to somebody else. And, and, and I don't know what was in that cup, but I, I just went, I got to take a drink of the cup. And, Absolutely. Uh, and, just, and just take your chances. What was in there? Oh, I, I, I think I, I, there could have been a concoction that God only knows what was in there. But the, one of the craziest things that I ever saw in the Stanley Cup was the world's largest Remember in the old days, back in the 80s, the, 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 the drink of choice was a B-52. I think it was Kahlua and oh. all the, and vodka and all this. Well, they made the largest B-52 in the Stanley Cup, and uh, <laughs> that, that, was, that, was, that was a shot of choice that night. <laughs> but did you do any I, – I know that when uh, the Penguins won, I think it ended up at the bottom of Lemieux's pool or something like that. Like, did it, anybody – any great stories with the, uh, the Rangers Stanley Cup? Oh, I, I, I tell you what, if that Stanley Cup could talk, it could, uh, it could <laughs> that would be a, a bestseller. Uh, you know, I, I think the, the Stanley Cup has been well-traveled. And one of the things, Dan, as you know, that it's, it's probably the only trophy that the players get to take and parade around and take to their hometowns and 
and really celebrate the cup. And it's probably one of the reasons why it's such a people's uh, trophy. Uh, everybody gets an opportunity normally when someone wins it to take it to their hometown and get their picture taken with it and the magic that it creates and the, the emotion that it, it, that it creates. But, you know, it's done a lot of good too, you know, not only the parties, but it's done a lot of good with charities and many different uh, things. And, uh, but as you know, Dan, uh, we, we did have to get the cup its own babysitter after a certain amount of uh, events took place with the cup. So I think it's the only trophy in professional sports that has its own 24 seven babysitter. <laughs> Is there a player that you played against you would like a piece of you? You still would like to hit him one more time, one more Every shift. Every one of them. Every one of them. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not a it's not a place for pleasantries if you're trying to win. But when you played against Gretzky, having played with him, was there extra incentive? You you weren't allowed to probably hit him in in practice oh, yeah. or skate rounds. No, oh, oh exactly. well, of course. I I saw people try to hit him all the years that I played with them, and then of course when he got traded, I really quickly realized that. My guess is I'm going to have to play, play him hard when we do play. And sure enough, the first year he got traded to L.A. when I was still in Edmonton, we played him in the playoffs. And then I realized how hard he is to capture and to hit. But uh, back in those days, uh, there was no taking any prisoners. Uh, I, if anything was in the way of trying to win something, <laughs> as good as a friend as Wayne was. Uh, <laughs> and you know the greatest part about it, Dan, too, is that I think he he knew that and he expected it. So... Uh, he was he was pretty wily on the ice, and he never got himself in a position to get hit too often. Great to see you. Hope you're having fun in TV, and uh, thanks for joining us. Great to be with you, Dan. Take care. That's Mark Messier. Stanley Cup playoffs continue tonight on the Mothership starting at 7 Eastern. Lightning and the Leafs, followed by Kraken Avalanche at 930. Mark will be doing a studio analysis for both of those games.